after in the morning. Welcome to this blessed new day. Welcome to this morning's meditation space. And I'm going to share some, some things with you again today. I hope you've all rested well. Please do say hi and where you're tuning in from. And um, comment below and, and like this post. The more comments and, and things, the, the more people will be able to see it and join us this morning. So please do feel free to put a comment below. And if you'd like to ask me anything this morning about anything that I'm sharing, or if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them as fully and deeply as possible. So welcome to this morning. Welcome to this beautiful new day. Let's all have gratitude in our hearts for all the many billions of possibilities of unfolding of consciousness today. Good morning Val, lovely to have you here. So this morning I'm going to start by reading today's date, some opening doors within um, the book by Eileen Caddy that I've been sharing. And Eileen is the founder of the Findhorn Foundation, Findhorn Spiritual Community in Scotland. So if you're just joining, please say hi where you're tuning in from. And please, um, you're very welcome to ask me any questions this morning. I'll do my, my best to open up the space and to answer as fully as possible. So today's date How many times during the day are you consciously aware of me? How many times during the day do you recognise my hand in what is happening and give me thanks? Take time today and try to keep in contact with me all the time. You will not find it easy to begin with, for you will find yourself wandering off through the highways and byways of life, when not one single thought of me enters your consciousness for a long time. To begin with, you will have to learn to bring your consciousness back to me, and to stop wandering aimlessly. But as you keep on doing it, gradually you will become more and more consciously aware of me. You will learn to live more and move and have your being in me and you will know the meaning of our oneness and there is no separation that I am in you and you are in me and that we are one. Yes, remembering, remembering the divine, remembering grace, remembering God in every moment, and certainly in every day. When we keep our focus on the divine, on God, and miracles show up, there are miracles happening all the time around us. But we begin to see them more, the more gratitude that we find in our hearts for everything exactly as it is. Good morning, Thomas. I'm opening up the space again for questions this morning. <coughs> so if anybody has anything they would like to ask me, please just write it in the comments below. And today, I'm going to share a little bit 
of my friends that um G U R U or Guru uh Krishna Prem um who was with Osho in, in India for quite a while. Um I have to admit I haven't read the book as usual. I've been given the book and I haven't read it. So I'm using this space to share with you guys um all these beautiful treasures that I have on my bookshelf and in my space. Um it makes more sense to me to share them with you all than have them unread sitting on my shelf. <laughs> so I'm going to read what I opened the book um, to this morning. So I'll start there. So I'll show you the, the front of the book. That's Osho. That's Krishna Prem. Happy Tuesday, Lynn. We must catch up. <laughs> You're not far from me. Beloved Master, when I first sat in front of you at Woodlands 14 years ago, there was an explosion inside. I don't know what it means, but I've often had the feeling that all I've been trying to do ever since is catch up to something that has already happened. Krishna Prem, the question you have asked has tremendous implications for all the seekers of truth because it is a question that touches the very fundamental law of those who are in search of something inexplicable, something inexpressible. Let me first make the law clear to you. It may have happened to many. It is going to happen to everybody. But you may not have taken the whole comprehensive view. The law is that when you first meet the master, you come innocent without any experience. You simply come as a receptivity, a sensitivity, ready to move into any dimension, willingly and totally. Hence, the first meeting with the master always brings an explosion. The explosion happens because of your innocence, because of your unexpecting mind. You know nothing about spirituality. You know nothing about ecstasy. Your not knowing is the cause of the explosion. But then again, a very troublesome journey. Then begins, sorry, that, but then begins a very troublesome journey. Then begins a nightmare. Then each and every moment you are waiting for that explosion to happen again. And you may wait for years. It will not happen because you are not fulfilling the basic condition for its happening. You have forgotten completely in what situation the first explosion has happened. Morning Tony, morning Michaela. Now there is no way to be again in that situation. Whatever you do there will be an expectation, the experience. You cannot create that not knowing, that is not within your hands, and that is not the way exi existence functions. So the first thing you have to do, Krishna Prem, is to forget all about that explosion. It was good that it happened, but there are far greater things. Why bother about something so primary, a kindergarten experience? An explosion, more like a pop, really, happens with impeccable timing as firecrackers are set off at a neighbourhood wedding celebration. You see, just like that. Start waiting for something greater. Of course you don't know what that something will be. Another explosion, and the assembly collapses with laughter. The master looks around, tentatively grinning. I'm afraid that the moment I say anything more, it will happen again. A pause to let the hilarity settle. You start fresh. You sit by my side, not expecting, but waiting. And try to understand the difference between expecting and just waiting. An expectation, in expectation there is a desire, and there is a clear cut object that you are desiring and that is blocking your progress. When you are just waiting, 
when you don't know what the experience is, just waiting is so precious, so valuable, so deeply transforming that something greater than the first explosion is bound to happen. It will not be the same explosion. In these four years, so much water has gone down the Ganges. Neither you are you nor I am the same person. Nothing is the same. The whole situation is changing every moment. And you get stuck with some beautiful moment and go on missing greater and greater beauties and greater ecstasies. Unhinge yourself. Unless you drop that explosion and the expectation for it, you will remain 14 years back. And between me and you, there will be the gap of 14 years. Just understand that it happened because you were not expecting it. And now it is not happening because you are expecting it. It is a simple law, but very fundamental. Everybody becomes a victim of it. Once you have tasted something, you start asking for it again. Remember, existence is inexhaustible. It can give you so much. Just don't ask for repetition. Existence hates repetition. It does not want you to have the same experience again. Even if it is the same experience, it will not be the same experience. Do you understand? Existence is original. Every moment. And to find a synchronicity with this originality, Krishna Prem, is all that one can experience. This is the ultimate ecstasy. Om Mani Padme Om. Om Mani Padme Om. Om Mani Padme Om. And very interestingly, Om Mani Padme Om has just come on, on my stereo <laughs> as I'm saying these words. Maybe I'll turn it up so you can hear it. Hang on. Such is the beauty and synchronicity of life. When we're in the flow, when we're open, everything just happens by magic. Om Mani Padme Om. I'll just look for something more to share in here. Courage, the joy of living dangerously. Aloneness simply means completeness. You are whole. There is no need of anybody else to complete you. So try to find out your innermost center where you are always alone, you have always been alone. In life, in death, wherever you are, you will be alone. But it is so full, it is not empty. It is so full and so complete and so overflowing with all the juices of life, with all the beauties and benedictions of existence. That Once you have tasted your aloneness, the pain in the heart will disappear. Instead, a new rhythm of tremendous sweetness, peace, joy, bliss will be there. That's from the path of the mystic, Ayosho.
creativity, unleashing the forces within. To live in relationship and yet remain independent, that is what courage is. The new man will be courageous. In the past, only two kinds of cowards have existed on earth, the worldly kind and the otherworldly kind. But both are cowards. The really brave man will live in the world and yet not be of it. Either this is going to happen or total destruction, or a total destruction. Now there is no third alternative. Man cannot survive as he is. Either he has to change himself, transmute himself, or he has to die and vacate the earth. That's from the Book of Wisdom by Osho. I'll turn this down again now. Om Mani Padme Om. And now for a reading from the Osho Zen Tarot. three cards this morning for us all. And just to remind you what that book was that I was reading, it's G-U-R-U by Krishna Pran and um, he wrote me this beautiful message inside um, when I was often called Amy as a child and he knows me as Amy. Hi Amy, here is a present from Rajen's friend, to remember and remember to live in the present, Krishna Prem. Where else is there to live really? If we live anywhere else but the present, then we are living dead, we are the living dead, we're not alive. Our minds are in some past idea or some future idea or we are not with the here and now, we don't witness the miracles, we don't witness the gifts and the abundance that's all around us. To live, to fully truly live is to be in the present, to be here and now. And we learn to be present through meditation. Meditation is the key to bringing ourselves into our natural state of being, which is presence. As children, as very small children, when we're born, we are pure presence. We have no ideas or concepts or beliefs about anything. We are pure joy and presence. And we respond and react to our environment and those around us. And we respond fully because we are totally in the moment. We are with our bodies and whatever is happening. So this morning's cards are tuning in. Very appropriate. <laughs> And that reminds me, please say hi and where you're tuning in from if you're listening. And please ask me a question if you'd like to know, or, you know, if you'd like to know something or you'd like to talk about something in more depth. Control. And abundance. So, tuning in. Tuning inwards 
is not a turning, sorry, turning in, it's turning in, not tuning in. Turning inwards is not a turning at all. Going inwards is not a going at all. Turning inwards simply means that you have been running after this desire and that, and you have been running and running and running, and you've been coming again and, and again to frustration. That each desire brings misery, that each that there is no fulfilment through desire, that you never reach anywhere, that contentment is impossible. Desire is like a bowl. A bowl with a hole in it. And whatever we desire, there will always be more. There will always be something else, something greater, something better. And so that can never be filled. That bowl just keeps on emptying itself as it fills itself up and can never be full. If we let go of our attachment to desire, that means we can have desire, but not be attached to any outcome or any idea of what something is going to look like. Or even anything. If we can have desire, but without attachment, then we will always be full. There will never be anything to lose. There will never be any sense of losing anything. We will be full and content without the other thing, without the need for other things to fulfill our desires, whether that's people, things, whatever it might be. Seeing the truth that running after desires takes you nowhere, you stop. Not that you make an effort to stop. If you make any effort to stop, it is again running. In a subtle way, you are still desiring. Maybe now it is desirelessness that you desire. If you are making an effort to go in, you are still going out. Any effort can only take you out, outwards. All journeys are outward journeys. There is no inward journey. How can you journey inwards? You are already there. There is no point in going. When, you going, when going stops, journeying disappears. When desiring is no more clouding your mind, you are in. This is called turning in. But it is not a turning at all. It is simply not going out. The woman in this image has a faint smile on her face. In fact, she's just watching the antics of the mind, not judging, not trying to stop them, not identified, just watching as if they were traffic on the road or ripples on the surface of a pond. And the antics of the mind are slightly amusing as it jumps up and down and twists this way and that, trying to get your attention and seduce you into the game. To develop the knack of taking a distance from the mind is one of the greatest blessings. It is what meditation is all about, really. Not chanting a mantra or repeating an affirmation, but just watching. As if the mind belongs to somebody else. You are ready to take this distance now and to watch the show without getting caught up in the drama. Indulge yourself in the simple freedom of turning in whenever you can. And the, knack of, and the knack of meditation will grow and deepen within you. Hi Thomas. My take on synchronicity. That's a good question. Synchronicity is simply the magic that exists in life. Everything is always happening in response to everything else. 
So it's like a butterfly flapping its wings on the other side of the world. There is a subtle vibration from the butterfly's wings that moves through and maybe creates a gust of wind somewhere else. Synchronicity is when everything is coming together perfectly, divinely, and sometimes it's more obvious than others. Synchronicity is happening all the time. It's the magic in life. It's, it's the highest intelligence of life. And when we are moving in a similar direction, we attract people, opportunities, and we also create those people to show up and those opportunities to move in that direction. But it also has to be in the will of the entire universe for those things to happen. Otherwise, it simply couldn't happen. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if there's anything else that comes up from that that you'd like me to, to express. Morning Attic. The next card is control. Control persons are always nervous because deep down turmoil is still hidden. If you are uncontrolled, flowing alive, then you are not nervous. There is no question of being nervous. Whatsoever happens, happens. You have not expect you have no expectations for the future, you are not performing. Then why should you be nervous? To control that mind, one has to remain so cold and frozen that no life energy is allowed to move into your limbs and into your body. If energy is allowed to move, those repressions will surface. That's why people have learned how to be cold, how to touch others and yet not touch them, how to see people and yet not see them. People live with cliches. Hello, how are you? Nobody means anything. These are just to avoid the real encounters of two persons. People don't look into each other's eyes. They don't hold hands. They don't try to feel each other's energy. They don't allow each other to pour. Very afraid somehow, just managing cold and dead in a straitjacket. There is a time and a place for control. But if we put it in charge of our lives, we end up totally rigid. The figure in this encases the angles of pyramid shapes that surround him. Glitter, light glitters and glints off his shiny surfaces, but does not penetrate. It's as if he is almost mummified inside a structure he's built up around himself. His fists are clenched and his stare is blank, almost blind. The lower part of his body beneath the table is at a knife point, a cutting edge that divides and separates. His world is ordered and perfect, but this is not. A, but he is not alive. He cannot allow any sponta spontaneity or vulnerability to enter it. The image of the King of Clouds reminds us to take a deep breath, loosen our neckties, and take it easy. If mistakes happen, it's okay. If things get a little out of hand, it's probably just what the doctor ordered. There is much, much more to life than being on top of things. That was the card control. I'm going to read Abundance now. Beautiful. Abundance. In the East, people have condemned the body, condemned matter, called matter illusory, maya. It does not really exist, it only appears to exist. It is made of the same stuff as dreams are made of. They denied the world, and that is the reason for the East remaining poor, sick and in starvation. Half of humanity has been accepting the inner world, but denying the outer world. The 
other half of humanity has been accepting the material world and denying the inner world. Both are half, and no man who has half can be contented. You have to be whole. Rich in the body, rich in science, rich in meditation, rich in consciousness. Only a whole person is a holy person, according to me. I want Zorba the Buddha to meet together. I want Zorba and Buddha to meet together. Zorba alone is hollow. His dance has not an eternal significance. It is momentary and pleasure. Soon he will be tired of it. Unless you have inexhaustible resources available to you from the cosmos itself, unless you become existential, you cannot become whole. This is my contribution to humanity, the whole person. This Diosan character is the very picture of a whole man, a Zulba, the Buddha, who can drink wine, dance on the beach and sing in the rain and at the same time enjoy the depths of understanding and wisdom that belong to the sage. In one hand he holds a lotus, showing that he respects and contains within himself the grace of the feminine. His exposed chest and open heart and relaxed belly show that he is at home with his masculinity as well, utterly self-contained. The four elements of earth, fire, water and sky all conjunct at the king of rainbows who sits atop the book of wisdom of his life. If you are a woman, the king of rainbows brings the support of your own male energies into your life. A union with a soulmate within. For a man, this card represents a time of breaking through the conventional male stereotypes and allowing the fullness of the whole human being to shine forth. If you're just tuning in, please say hi and where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions for us to discuss this morning, please feel free to put something in the comments below. It's getting much lighter outside now. like to show you my plant actually hopefully I can do this without knocking anything over it's been in this meditation space for um, just under a couple of weeks and look what's happening it's blossoming let me see so beautiful full of buds Just as we are, they're all flowers waiting to blossom through grace and under the perfect conditions and in the perfect time, divine timing. Our souls blossom. And something happens that changes the very core of our being, that changes our complete experience, where we can no longer be in duality with everything, where we understand the perfection in the yin and the yang, in the yes and the no. in the hot and the cold. Where we can no longer argue with existence. We can no longer say, that's not right. But where we have a higher perspective that everything is happening exactly as it needs to. in 
every moment for everybody. And there are so many lessons to be learned for all of us. I'm not sure what the time is. If anybody could let me know, that would be really helpful. Let's bring ourselves into this space totally present. Thank you Val. We'll just take a couple of minutes silence then, five minutes. <coughs> it's important to give ourselves time every day a few minutes every day or as long as you can give yourself every day to just be with yourself and whatever is going on with, within you and to be with any kind of unacceptance. Yes, Lynn, the universe is unfolding in divine cosmic order. Exactly even and especially when it doesn't look like it because that's just our judgment and we cannot possibly know the vastness and the intelligence that moves through everything that is creating everything for everybody Let's be silent now for a few moments. Being with the breath, however it wants to express itself, it's mine. Scanning the body for any sensations, feelings, anything that needs your attention this morning, that needs your loving awareness and attention. Can you be with your joy as easily as you can be with your suffering? Can you be with your suffering as easily as you can be with your joy? Two sides of the same coin, the yin and the yang, both need an acceptance of whatever is happening and a non-attachment to an outcome, a surrender in every moment, a dying to what is in every moment. Can you be with your suffering as you are with your joy and your peace? Being with your suffering is bringing peace Learning to be in surrender with everything is the highest intelligence. Breathing naturally, allowing the breath to be however it wants to be this morning. Aware of the body, aware of your connection to the ground, to the chair or the bed, wherever you're sitting.
welcoming in this moment exactly as it is, however it shows up. Surrender to it, allow it, be with it. Go into it.
many, many blessings to you all. Have a beautiful day. Keep your eyes, heart and mind open for miracles. Namaste, much love. And if you've missed this, I'll repost it now so you can watch it from the beginning. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. <laughs>